Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the esteemed FaceTime with Leaders, an initiative by World Development Corporation. I'm Sunny Pancholi, anchor at World Development Corporation. FaceTime with Leaders is a platform for industry titans to share their experiences, thoughts, ideas, and best practices in order to inspire one another and future leaders. In a nutshell, we attempt to encapsulate the multi-decadal learnings acquired by these industry leaders. We also hope that by conducting these FaceTime with Leaders interviews, we can bring together a global community of eminent personalities. By bringing together such visionaries on one platform, we hope to play a part in inspiring the lives of other leaders. Great learnings from great leaders undoubtedly assist everyone by identifying, nurturing, and using the trade secrets that are proven success formulas for many. And this is what we aim for with these sessions by making them a gathering of industry stalwarts and a knowledge sharing community. We have one such corporate titan on FaceTime with leaders with us today, Mr. Roger Kumar. He is a visionary entrepreneur and the founder of Case Group, a pioneering industrial conglomerate that has achieved remarkable growth and innovation since its inception in January 1993. As a mechanical engineering graduate from NIT Kurukshetra, he has exhibited unparalleled leadership, transforming Case Group into a trailblazing manufacturer and provider of cutting-edge industrial solutions. His strategic acumen and unwavering commitment to excellence have led Case Group to expand its scope of offerings without any limitations on reach. Welcome to FaceTime with Leaders. We are thrilled to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sunny. And thank you for the nice words. It's an honor, really. So, Mr. Roger, could you let our viewers know in brief about your career journey so far by highlighting important milestones, etc.? Yeah, it's been a long career. I passed out in '86, uh, as you as you rightly rightly said. Then uh, I worked for a little while with a uh, with a German company uh, that was by the campus interview, and then I started off my own, and it's been an entrepreneurship journey. Right from then, you know, uh, so this case group I formed in 93. So I've been uh, managing director, as you said, of case group for almost like 30 years now. So that's my experience goes. Everything goes with case group. And we are perpetual startups. We started very humbly. We started uh, with two products rather than the beginning. One was, uh, we call it scale band, uh, non-chemical water treatment equipment. Uh, which we are still doing, and uh, water cooling towers. Uh, we, we we made FRP cooling towers. And then we, after a couple of years, we also started air pollution uh, control equipment as we thought there was a gap. And then uh, for the last 15 years, we were also doing uh, coal gasifiers. Uh, there were various variants in coal gasifiers. We were doing hot gasifiers, then we were doing coal gasifiers. And then now we are also doing uh, what we call uh, uh, fluidized bed gasification. And very recently, for uh, which I'm very busy these days, we are doing uh, coal to chemicals, that is making hydrogen, making methanol, making ammonium nitrate from coal, which is the recent uh, offset of our government also. And uh, we are also very seriously involved with CCUS, that is carbon capture, utilization and storage more of how to utilize CO2, how to uh, basically keep the environment. You know, our prime minister has given a, a, a very, uh, this thing in, in COP that we have to go carbon neutral by 2070. So that is something on which we are working on very seriously. And I think we should be able to achieve it with the technologies that we have today. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a humble beginning. We are, we are good, thankful to God. It's been nice. Thank you. All right. So continuing our conversation, here is my next question to you and a very obvious one. What led to the establishment of Case Group? Well, initially, when you are young, uh, it's basically to keep your head up over the water. So uh, keep your entrepreneurship going. And But uh, when, you, when you start doing something and slowly you realize about your products and uh, you create the niche value to your products, and uh, to keep it up above your competition and to do good for the society around you. You know, the various, because all our products have something which is unique. 
we enter into a technology and then we realize that there's a huge gap for the technology. Uh, I don't want to uh, comment anything on uh, the our uh, competitors or anything, but then there is always a gap. Whatever you go in, there's always a gap. There's a scope to do better. So that's what we've excelled into. So we have tried to do better in every product that we have introduced in the market. And that is what has kept us floating all the, all the way. I mean, with all our products, I can give you various examples how we are better. That will go a little more technical. If you're ready to listen, I can tell you. But then uh, uh, these, these are, this is our USP, uh, that we have something with our product which is different and then the other products in the market. And we have a social angle to that also. You know, why we're doing it. So if I if I tell you with your permission, like scale ban when we when we started, it was just a non-chemical water treatment equipment. But then with that, we are increasing the cycle of concentration of water, just decreasing the blowdown from the circuits. And it's saving huge amount of water. And water is scared today, as you know. It wasn't 30 years back, but today it's it's a it's a value. If you if you use our equipment, you will be saving huge amount of water. Similarly for cooling towers, we started FRP cooling towers because we did not want to use wooden cooling towers because it was using forest wood. And luckily for us or whatever you can say, it, Supreme Court of India also banned wood in India. So now people doing wooden cooling towers actually importing wood. But then it's not no good. What if you you burn, you cut the forest in India or you cut the forest in Burma or Indonesia? It's the same thing. So we principally did not want to go for a wooden cooling towers, and we introduced certain things like SS internal so that it becomes immortal. You know, basically cooling towers are lifelong uh, life. So th these are few things like um, example I'm doing. Like we started air pollution equipment. We we started capturing the fugitive emissions. No one did it. Our equipment, we have very little take in India because people for air pollution just take for semantics. But our equipment are very popular in Goa, Tamil Nadu, and also in Middle East because they really wanted air pollution control equipment. And we reached emission at that time less than 30, which no one was doing, 30, P, 30 ppm, SPM. So that is a huge thing that we achieved at that time. Similarly, for coal gasifications like we're doing, we had hot gasifier where there was no tar or no water coming out. It was it was a zero liquid discharge technology, very early technology. So we're doing coal gasifiers, fixed bed. There also we're circulating all the all the water. It's going back into the gasifier, saving a lot of water. And you know, uh, good for the good for the customers. Yeah, good for the for pollution from pollution angle from uh, environmental angle. It is a huge success. Now, recently, as I told you, we're working on uh, fluidized bed gasifiers, we're working on carbon capture. And that is something today we have to get rid of carbon dioxide. Otherwise, we're playing with uh, the environment. We're playing with uh, what we're having, you know, all the glaciers melting, everything. We have to get rid of CO2. So we are working in that. I think if our if our if if humanity take, gets rid of CO2 at a level, we should be, we should get our planet back onto the track, which we are abusing like anything today. That's what I feel. That sounds incredible. So building on to that, our viewers are eager to know what ideologies, principles, values, etc. do you live by with your firm, Case Group? And could you state some examples of achieving remarkable results with them? See, I just told you, uh, these are the values on which we're living on. We are not only working for technology, we are also working for the social aspect of it, like saving water, not cutting forest woods, saving uh, underground water by gasification. I told you we don't put anything in the ground. Uh, if you know, there's a place in India, in Western uh, India, in state of Gujarat called Morbi. Their NGT banned all the gasifiers few years back because they were uh, contaminating the underground water. There's a huge uh, deterioration of the nature which they had done, and that is wrong. So, uh, you know, these kind of things should be should be uh, banned for that matter. So our technology for that matter, we have worked on such principles that we are for nature, we are for technology, and uh, that is how we grow. I think that is that is the underlying statement of that. So that is exciting. We are working on it. Amazing. So now that we have discussed your career journey, your professional pursuits, roles and responsibilities, and your moral values, Let's move on to the subject of corporate governance and ESG. So here is my next question to you. 
how and when did you develop an interest in esg and corporate governance the esg uh, maybe a word coined uh, recently but if you remember esg has been part of our culture it's a indian culture tata has developed jamshedpur long back but they developed the whole city you know and they did everything which you have today in the book of esg they did just about everything so many years back uh, jindal did it in uh, raigad even uh, recently uh, i have seen uh, we are working for rungta mines it's a company in um, chatisgarh as well as uh, odisha so there they have developed so much of uh, uh, adivasi area uh, chaybasa and uh, chaliyama i was impressed everything is connected with that so any company which is doing good in a particular area i have seen they do work for for socially and uh, social governance also in that area and environment also now everyone is taking care of because our cpcb is very 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 strong now so even if it, they don't want to do it from inside they have to do it because they have to they have to control it and i think esg today is forming a big name for any 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 uh, um, corporate which is coming up like i was recently as i said in africa there was a there was a project which we are planning to do and we're talking to indian exim bank so he said that okay we will we will be taking we'll give the loan for this particular project once the esg part is cleared you know so now the banks are taking also esg very seriously that means that if the environmental uh, part of the company is cleared only then if any company is giving uh, debt or bank is giving debt or equity uh, give, given by these funders are only coming up when they are satisfied that the esg part is part is honored by the corporate so esg is playing a huge role huge role in our society today i mean we have to it is addressed also and we have to address also i have a take on that esg is uh, environment social uh, governance uh, social uh, should be it is included but safety is a very major factor there so i would say it should be environment social safety governance because safety is a huge parameter in an industry it is not just industry it is all the stakeholders around the industry which is you know bhopal's uh, tragedy how it happened so that that was something to do with safety now if the people of bhopal had known if what to do if something like this happens we would have had less casualties at that time so safety factor is i think one very important parameter which should be highlighted when you say social you can also say safety so safety is also one important parameter which should be highlighted in any industry and it's a part of governance it's a very it's a huge part you're working in a company in a in a in a manufacturing setup especially when you are into mines or especially or, or you are into some uh, big fabrication shop you have overhead cranes walking around you all over the place so anything can happen at any time it's an accident so you have to take care of safety in a huge manner i think also Uh, so uh, it's it's an important parameter esg is coming becoming part of it i'm very happy with it now people are taking it seriously see anything what you say will only be taken up if you think it from inside everybody thinks it not only entrepreneurs not only people who are putting up an organization people who are also working there people who are related to it in any way all the stakeholders as i said even people staying around that organization they should be aware what can go wrong our social impact of course is there we have to we have to uplift the society around it i think that's happening also to a large extent anybody having an organization that they, they value uh, the social impact that they, they put up the hospitals schools they give give jobs to people around they do uplift the communities around and communities should also be educated about education environment of course is now i think more or less taken care of by the agencies or by the entrepreneurs we have strict norms we have to fix up india need to catch up with international norms like nox and sox which we don't have today uh, we only have um, uh, spm so once we have all the pollution norms intact i think we should be doing okay so that's my take on esg and governance comes naturally right <laughs> <laughs> exceptional so before we conclude our discussion on this subject i would like to quickly ask you as an esg and corporate governance expert what values do you bring to the table 
Like I only, I told you what value values I get to the table because I, being a technical person, I value. This is my. This is the job I do. As I told you, we're already working on CCUS. This is this is my bread and butter. So environment, as I, we are already into air pollution control devices, and uh, uh, CO2 is a big. Uh, uh, issue today which we have to manage it's a it's a greenhouse gas and you, when you, if you capture it and you utilize it capturing is one old method when people used to say you know you put co2 into the ground or you put co2 into into sea you can capture it and then you get rid of it now there are technologies available by the way of which you can utilize co2 convert them into uh, products like methanol you can you can make uh, dry ice with that. You can use bicarbonates with that. There are huge technologies now today, they're, and they're available. So people can go for these technologies and get rid of their CO2 professionally. So uh, that is a very good answer to, to what we can have a very clean environment today. And CO2 is a major issue. SPM and all we have already, I think, more or less taken care of. Uh, in the industry and people are very well uh, versed with this and how to do it. CO2 is only a big chapter which we don't have in India as it also abroad is just beginning but now I think technologies are coming by way of which we can capture carbon dioxide and do good for the environment. So my take on this as I told you as a professional is how to improve the environment socially of course we're already doing it. We have a CSR uh, uh, part of what we are doing. We have something called extra minds which we're doing for the last 10 years. We have introduced online classroom lectures of premium Indian teachers from DPS and from other premier schools from India. The idea was to teach their teachings to the to a student in village so that he can come at par with the teaching which metros do, metros like Delhi or Bombay does. So that was the idea which we started 10 years back and it's absolutely free of cost. So it's online. We had earlier uh, DVDs which used to give free of cost to all the government schools so that their teachers can take help of that. Now we are doing, now it's online, it's on YouTube. We launched it absolutely free of cost. You can, any student anywhere in the world rather. Uh, uh, I was in Africa, so I was talking to a few people about it and they also have almost similar uh, learning standards of our schools, just like CBSE. So they were very thrilled seeing those lectures and uh, yeah, it's good. So that is that's the social part which I am doing personally to give it back to the society. So that's what my take on uh, on this issue is. Amazing, Mr. Roger. All right. So since we were discussing technology, uh, let me ask you, what are some of the most remarkable changes you have seen in your field with changes in technology? That is part A. And part B is, what changes do you expect to see with the advent of IoT, AI, ML, blockchain, Web 3.0, etc., etc.? Uh, see, this is a game changer. This is absolute game changers. Even a young guy like you, when you were studying and the children studying now, they are much more knowledge knowledgeable than you, right? And you can imagine about me. <laughs> so <laughs> why, why, why is this happening? This is happening just because of the technology. You know, and this Web3 is going to be a game changer in a big manner. This is like, uh, what do you call? This is like a assimilation of all the knowledge on one platform and taking it from there. And it's free for everybody. You know, ubiquity is the word. Omnipresence is the word today. You have technology on your palm, on your on your mobile phone, whatever you want to have a look at. Yeah, isn't it amazing? In our time, we used to go to the library, all right, <laughs> to study, figure out the books. Your time, probably, you used to get some information where people used to put on Google or something, that time Yahoo or Google, whatever. Now they can just put it on any of the search engines and they are interrelated. You can get it from anywhere. And that's absolutely amazing. AI is going to have a huge impact on humanity. It's also scary, honestly speaking, at times. And we have to be very, very careful how to use it. If it goes into the wrong hands, you know, you know, there is always God, and then there is always Saturn, right? <laughs> he's, also, he's also doing his job. So that is the scary part of it because these technologies are very good, very, very good for humanity if it's used for humanity. But we have to be very careful not to uh, let it pass into the wrong hands because same technology can be destructing humanity also. 
you know so that 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 is where our our uh, um, people who matter in this this have to take care that this does not go to wrong people and uh, thing like nuclear bombs we have today i mean if they are they are with with countries they found they find themselves they think they're very responsible but if they go into wrong hands and trigger it i mean there can be a nuclear war tomorrow so who knows who has the nuclear bomb or not even terrorists might just be having them it's something like that so same like uh, and but this is very 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 interesting and i'm very excited about these technologies adopting it with my te existing technologies we can do wonders with our technology also like if i can if i run a gasification plant and if i can see it in from my drawing room what is happening there isn't it amazing that we can do today so that is something which is where i can control it I can control it in my environment sitting there, what is happening uh, 2,000 kilometers away from me. So that is that is something which is very amazing. And all the data are in front of me. I can manage it. I can control it. I can advise someone. So these are some things that is from my perspective. But otherwise, these equipments are very, very amazing. Like you, you must have heard Tesla, uh, driverless car, you know. That's a good beginning. <laughs> Where it is going to end, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do it in India or not. Like now, if you use the same technology in warfare, it's it's isn't it scary? You don't use humans to sit in the airplanes. You know, you can do anything. So that's the that's the bad part of it, I would say. So we are using it to destruct humanity. So that's what I meant. That these technologies are good, but they should be, I think, diligently and uh, used should be used with a lot of responsibility. But they are very exciting and you cannot stop them. They are going to come. They are there. That is a part of evolution like of humanity. I don't know what we will turn into. I don't think so it's possible we came from monkeys. They say we're not going to turn up. Into, this is what we are going to turn, up, turn into. Developing our society, developing our, our way of living, developing our... Uh, ourselves. But it's very scary. It, it also runs into your privacy, man. It also runs into privacy because uh, where you where you have a wall, you don't know. So we have to use it with a lot of responsibility. And that is something which which is scary. Otherwise, it's very good. I'm in for it. <laughs> Mr. Roger, thank you so much for sharing such insights on different subjects. So this brings us to the last question of the session. We are building a community of industry magnets. The move is meant for cross-pollination of knowledge and building a knowledge-sharing community of corporate giants and industry experts. So what are your thoughts about these initiatives taken by Mr. Zishan Pathan, Mr. Hevel Mehta, and the whole team of World Development Corporation? So this is something very nice. Birds of same feather flock together anyways. So when there is a comfort level and you can share your knowledge, sharing knowledge anyways in, in, in mortality, you know, the Lai Lama said that, I think. So we are reaching immortality by sharing sharing it on a platform which can be which can be you know uh, taken by anybody in the humanity. That will be nice because if you if you can share your knowledge up there, and then you can distribute in uh, in a manner that everybody can make use of it. I think nothing nothing greater than that. You can serve the humanity in that manner. Okay. It was fantastic conversing with you and I'm confident that your insights will inspire, inspire future leaders. Thank you, Mr. Roger, for joining us today. We wish you the best for your future endeavors. Moreover, trust that this initiative by Directors Institute has unquestionably expanded the participants' understanding and enriched their minds. Thank you so much, Sunny. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a nice day.